If you are a VR developer, you know the importance of creating complex interactable objects in VR. I'm Marcello from MindPod, and in this video, I'll explain how to create an interactable tool, a barcode scanner, which works with VR Builder, our Unity plugin to create VR applications without needing to code. The barcode scanner can be activated by holding the trigger and can read the values of labels placed in the scene. So let's get started. I've created a new project and set up a basic scene. I'm using Unity 2021 and I've already imported VR Builder 2.3.2. I've also imported the Unity package with the materials for this tutorial, which can be found in the description. The assets have been imported in the barcode scanner tutorial folder. In the scene, I just added a plane as a ground and a table where to put uh, our objects. Uh, there's nothing else done, so as a first thing, we need to set up the scene for VR using VR Builder. To do so, we select Tools, VR Builder, and New Process Wizard. Then we click Next and we create a new process in the existing scene. Let's call this Barcode Scanner Tutorial. It's okay to uh, set up the current scene. We don't need to create a new scene for this. Click Next and we are done. This is the workflow editor of VR Builder where we can create our process and make our application interactive, but we don't need this for now. We just want to create a tool at the moment. So we can see that three more game objects have been added to the scene. This is the rig and we can move it in front of our table and we can also set locomotion to continuous, which is not always a great choice in VR because it can give the user motion sickness, but in this case, uh, it's useful for us to just not have to create a whole teleportation system. Another thing we need to do is to disable the process controller. The process controller takes care of the process as described in the graph that we saw earlier, and only objects that are relevant are interactable. Since we have no process, no object will be interactable if this is enabled. So let's disable it since right now we just want to create a tool. Now we can open the folder with the, with the assets for this tutorial and look in the prefabs folder. And we can drag these two objects in the scene on the table. One is the barcode scanner and the other one is a box with a label that we can scan. These objects are just uh, a collection of meshes and uh, empty transforms. They have a collider, but they have nothing else. So we have to completely create the logic for them. Let's start by making the barcode scanner grabbable in VR. We can do this by adding a VR Builder property. Normally, this would be the grabbable property, but since we also want it to be used by pressing the trigger, we can directly add a usable property. This, this will add a few components, including a grabbable property. So now the object is usable, meaning VR Builder can detect a press of the trigger. Grabbable, meaning VR Builder can detect a grab and touchable, meaning VR Builder can detect a touch that doesn't really interest now, but uh, it's a requirement anyway. And uh, VR Builder also added this interactable object, which is the component that makes the object interactable in VR. This is an override of the grab interactor from XRIT, and it works uh, much the same way. If we try pressing play right now, we can see how the object is grabbable. We can see that we can grab it 
from any angle right now and this is fine for many objects but in this case we would like to be grabbed uh, uh, we would like to grab it uh, from the handle like this all the time since uh, it's meant to be used as a tool we also notice it's falling to the ground which is realistic but can be annoying so let's see what we can do about this we can specify the point uh, an object is grabbed from by dragging a transform in the attach transform field of the interactable object um, our prefab already has an empty transform put in the correct position uh, so the trigger on the controller matches the trigger on uh, on the object uh, so we can just drag that there and that should do it another thing we could do is to set the object as kinematic in the rigid body component this means the object won't use physics and uh, importantly won't fall to the ground let's try to play again now we can see that when i grab the object it snaps to the correct position with the controller and uh, when i release it it stays in the air so now we've taken care of the basics we can start making the object interactable let's start with something simple let's animate the trigger for that we are going to use a custom component in our assets it's called animate trigger this trigger has two functions that can set the trigger to pressed and not pressed and uh, we will call these two functions in a moment for now we need to drag the trigger object in the first field and uh, the second field requires the position the trigger is at when it's pressed and this is already provided by an empty transform in the prefab so let's just drag that now nothing will happen yet because there's nothing calling these uh, uh, the functions in the script yet so let's bind them to some events on our interactable object you can see here there is all the list uh, with all the events uh, in interactable object the ones we want are on activate and on deactivate which are called when the trigger is pressed and released so let's add two functions here and let's drag the barcode scanner in the object field and now we can select the animate trigger component and press the trigger when it's activated and release the trigger when it's not activated let's quickly press play to make sure it works And it does. When I press the trigger, it's animated on the object too. Now, with the same principle, we can add the logic for scanning objects, uh, for scanning labels. And uh, there is another custom component provided in the assets that uh, does that. We can add the barcode scanner component. This works with the Raycast that looks for a label and if the label is found, it stops scanning and uh, throws an event uh, and records the last code scanned. So it requires a Ray Transform from us, which is again already set in the prefab and this is the point the Ray will start from. And the scan distance uh, is set to 0.1 unit we are free to change it but it will be fine as it is now this needs to be set up the exact same way as the animate trigger script so let's do that and here we have a start scanning and 
stop scanning method. So now this will work, uh, but we have no label to scan yet. So let's create a scannable label. Looking at this box, we see that it's just a mesh with a collider and a label, uh, which is another mesh with another collider. The collider on the label is important because, uh, uh, as we've seen, we are using a raycast to scan it, so the ray needs a collider to hit. But this is not yet a proper label, so let's add a component from our folder. The barcode label, com label component will identify it as a label to be scanned. We can insert any value we want in this barcode value field, and you can use it in your application to fetch data from a dictionary or a database, or simply check that the correct label was scanned. Let's call it my label. Now, using the scanner in front of this label, we'll scan it but we will still see nothing because there is no logic connected to a label being scanned. We can fix that by adding another component to the barcode scanner. Uh, we have a barcode scanner debug component, which will print a debug log when a label is scanned. So now let's try this in VR. And we can see on the console that uh, the label has been scanned. This is useful for debugging, but not very useful in real life. So let's let the user know that the label has been scanned. We, see, we can see that the barcode scanner script has a code scanned event. So we can use this to just play a sound when a label is correctly scanned. Let's add an audio source component. and select the provided beep clip. Then we don't want it to play on a wake. We want it to be a 3D sound coming from the scanner. Now we want to add a call here, still to the barcode scanner object, and we will call the play function on the audio source. Now, when a code is scanned, we will hear a sound. Let's try this. Well, I heard the sound. Well, until now, this tutorial has been pretty similar to the base XRIT tutorial, and that's of course, makes sense uh, since uh, uh, VR Builder is based on XRIT and these events are the exact same that you will find on an XRIT interactor. What's different is that this object can be already used in VR Builder and VR Builder can already be aware of grabbing or using the object, but we can do something more. We can make it possible for VR Builder to read and set the labels. To do so, we will add another component to this object, a data property. Data properties are VR Builder properties that just store a value. And in this case, we will just store the last code scan. Let's add a component. And the component we want to add is a text data property, which is the VR Builder data property that stores strings. Here we want when a code is scanned, well, let's add a new function. When the code is scanned, we select the text data property and we set the value of the text data property to the scanned value. And now VR Builder will be able to read which value has been scanned from the label. 
Likewise, we can do something very similar with the label. Right now, the label is uh, a simple string typed in the inspector, but uh, we can make it readable by VR Builder. So you can set it with VR Builder, or you can simply use it to compare it with the, with the scan label. We can add a text data property here too. Now, we still need the barcode label, uh, the barcode label script uh, because this will identify the label as a scannable label, but we can set the value from the data property. When we press play, the data property changes to the default value we write here. So if we, here we write data property label, the value of this data property will change to data property label the moment we press play. And uh, when the value changes for any reason, this event is called. So we can add a function here and uh, when we press play, the barcode label, uh, barcode label component will call its set label function to set the label to the new value of the data property. This way, you can define label in a way that's readable by VR Builder. Now, to see this in function, we need to actually create a process. We must re-enable the process controller game object in order for the process to work and spend some time in the VR Builder editor to create a process. And this is the process I made. First, the user is required to grab the scanner and then to use it by pushing the trigger. Then I use states and data to compare the values of the data property on the barcode scanner and of the data property on the label. It's worth noting that data properties are available in VR Builder core, but uh, most conditions and behaviors related to them need to be unlocked uh, by a separate add-on. For example, states and data here for comparing these values. The other transition happens if the user drops the scanner, in which case they will be required to grab it again. If the values here are equal, it means that uh, the data property on the barcode scanner has the same value as the label. So the, the label has been scanned, so it will lead to the success step. Another thing worth noting in this uh, um, process is that some objects have been unlocked manually. Here in this step, for example, there is uh, no requirement to use the scanner. So the usable property was disabled by default. This means that the scanner would stop being used the moment uh, the previous step was finished. Of course, we want to keep using the scanner so we can actually scan the label. So I ticked this box to make sure it's possible. I also made uh, the scanner interactable in the success step, so it stays interactable after scanning the label and doesn't become non-interactable in the exact moment the label is scanned. Now let's see how this works in VR. Grab the scanner. Use the scanner. Scan the label. Success. I hope this tutorial was useful to you. If so, please make sure to like it and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.